Hey, what's up? It's Schnell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlogs. Prince Not Dead. We're going to be blasting Rochester, New York. Skull crushing death metal maniacs in Undeath. Caligari Records released Sentient Autolysis, which then caught the attention of some major labels. Although I'm not a big fan of Prosthetic Records, also actually fuck Prosthetic Records. But I don't want to see my boys in Undeath get screwed over the way Dragged in the Sunlight got screwed over. So, lesions of a different kind though, fuck yeah. As much as I don't like Prosthetic Records, any format you can get that bad boy on, do it. It's such a good album, and you know, as long as they're not in the same situation that Dragged in the Sunlight got into, it's all great, because I'm happy as fuck for the guys. And they have a full lineup, too. And getting to see this band live, they were so fucking good, even as a three-piece, like, fuck yeah. But I'm proud of these guys. And why am I not playing the, comp the compilation of Decomposition? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I uh, kind of just wanted to put on Sentient Autolysis. But um, in case you've never seen this, I like the extra art so much that to me that makes it worth getting a copy for. Like Matt Browning, Holy shit, man. Like, what a killer artist. It's kind of like, I don't know, he's one of my favorite death metal artists, but it would be the same, like, if I went to, um, I don't know, I, would, I wouldn't I would use, I, I wouldn't want my release to look too much like somebody else's release. I kind of like how we're using, like, with a cursed womb, certain like a certain style where it's not like i mean that might change in the future but for now we're kind of going with single images and like we're gonna go from there until you know maybe when we do a full length we'll do a landscape type cover but for now we're keeping it you know pretty simple the second press should be here next week i'm hoping I know, I know I screwed that up a couple of days ago. Um, turned out my mom was getting mail from Seattle as well. So I was like, I didn't know that she was expecting something. But here's what we're gonna be going over today. This is Noise Dosage Media fanzine issue number one. Not 100% written by John Lambert and Noise Dosage Media. Because in this write-up, it says how he always wanted to write his own book. But I wrote our band bio. And we got prime real estate. Next to fucking Bolt Thrower. And Ministry. I mean, that brought back some memories. But uh, you can tell I wrote this. And... For some reason, it bothered me as a published writer that I didn't... Because I kind of thought they were going to give us all, like, credit. Because on the back here, like, there's some bands that have two sentences, but because they're bigger bands, they get their name on the table of contents with, like, the people that they talk to. But most are interviews, and I understand. This is this guy's first zine. I feel he got a little bit over his head. Because it's pretty much every band right now in the underground that people are talking about. As well as some classic bands that get reviewed and stuff. But like, Pestilent Death have a great like little write-up. Path to War have a great little write-up. But then there's like some stuff where... It's just kind of like, oh, you know, it's just weird. Because I'm used to, you know, 
stuff like the Head Split newsletter. I mean, fuck. <laughs> I was actually going to do a whole Head Split, uh, like, newsletter, um... You know what? I'll do a live stream, and we'll just read every single Head Split newsletter I have. I have 13 through... Ah, fuck, they're out of order. No. I, I know I'm up in the 20s somewhere, though. I think I'm, like, at 20... Oh. Wait. All right, here it is. All right, so, issue 28. That's the last one I have. The first one I have is number 8. So, I have a good batch of head split newsletters, and I love them. They're fucking great. They're hilarious, and at the same time, very informative when it comes to the extreme underground. Like, really quick, let me read you this very sick little write-up about Cerebral Rot. It's a little interview, but... Uh, first off, DIY or fucking die. Really, really sick. Like, just look at that. Like, who gives a fuck? It's just sick. I love it. I, I really love Head Split. But this is about cerebral rot. Hello, rotters. What does your rehearsal room smell like? First off, that's a great question. Have you thought about moving your equipment into the Seattle sewers for grosser ambience? Cerebral Rot answers, smells like fucking rotting feces and decayed death. We live in the sewers of Seattle and we eat the shit. It's great. It's fucking great. I wish I could write something like that. Like, hell yeah. As soon as I read that, I just like started cracking up. Like, I thought that was so fucking funny for some reason. And like with Frozen Screams, you know, this shit's a lot more serious, I think, when it comes to less is more. And you can even go back to issue one here and like, you know, Ruin has a real, real interview right here with MJS, where in noise dosage, they just have a sentence, I think. But like I said, you know, it is what it is. I'm more than great. I'm beyond grateful, honestly, to be in the zine with my band. But I'm also a published writer. I used to write for a BMX magazine called Dig. And I've been printed. I've written gnarly articles never seen a penny and I didn't do it for money and I didn't do this for money but I didn't know this was going to be sold along with a digital version of the podcast I guess and here's what kind of bothered me a little bit about the podcast but first off you want to hear something funny about devourment and relapse records this made the zine for me was this little interview with uh, Chris Andrews from Devourment. Has Relapse Records ever tried to censor anything regarding Devourment? Now, remember, Devourment has a song called Baby Killer, Fucked to Death. There's some, you know, gnarly song titles. So when I saw they were asking us last record if we could kindly not use the F word, you know, fuck. They had a problem with that for some reason. The last Dying Fetus record was called Wrong One to Fuck With, or as I called it, Wrong Record to Listen To. But that's my own take on that. But like, seeing a write-up with Jeff from Possessed, it's badass. Like, for real, and Barney Greenway from Napalm Death, getting to share the same zine with these guys it's awesome, but I would have liked if they would have said in advance, like when it came to the band write-ups, and this could have just been 
a little lapse in communication with my band actually because I was just told like hey can you do a write-up about the band like what do you like describe how we would sound and like our label did the same thing but they were like in five words describe your band so I was like so like that was actually really hard but I didn't want to use the straight up term death metal and I didn't and yeah they used it and I mean A at Vermigenosis like I'm pretty sure he's the one that wrote up our official bio that's gonna be on the, the repress the second press not the repress well I guess it is a repress but you can tell I wrote this. If you read the video descriptions here, I just didn't know we weren't going to get, like, writing credit. Again, I, I don't want any money or anything, but, like, when I saw that my guitar player paid $12 for this, a cloth patch, and a free download of the um, podcast and a sticker... I was just kind of like, ah, man. Like, uh, dude, I, I wrote that. Uh, but, um, are people going to think this dude wrote this? And for some reason, this is where my anxiety comes in. I start getting panicky. I'm like, ah, oh, man, like, is somebody going to take credit for my writing? And I don't know why I started thinking like that. Because... Like, I knew this was going in a zine, but I, I thought they were going to, like, edit it, kind of. And, you know, maybe take certain words and rearrange them. So then it's not plagiarism. But it, it's not plagiarism to begin with because I was asked to do it from my guitar player. So uh, I did it, obviously. I wasn't going to say no to being in a zine. I just would have appreciated like band bios written by the people that wrote the band bios and if John wrote some of the band bios awesome but like I would put from the band's mouths to your eyeballs just any type of like you know hey I didn't write this part type deal but Again, this isn't decibel. There isn't space like this. Because I'm kind of talking about like this. And again, this is a magazine that's a fanzine. World of difference. I'm glad people will be able to, you know, find out about my band. I think that's fucking sick. But speaking of undeath, like, here's undeath's right up in decibel. I think Dutch wrote it. Yeah, D Dutch Pierce. Sick fucking guy. And, uh, yeah, he does a great write-up here about the band and everything. Like, about their schedule, like, with practicing, because they have, like, gnarly different schedules. And I just think it's, you know, really... It, again, this is professional. This is DIY. But I always felt like Frozen Screams just... That was the zine to be. Like, I'm repping Frozen Screams right now. But uh, I really like that pretty much every band that I'm cool with got some love in here. Like, going all the way up to Blood Incantation. But it says band reviews up here... So, it's just, and like, band discovery, but, I don't know, I just, and I see, and I, I know these are the people that did the banners, like, you'll see little Instagram, like, at, I just think if they just would have put, like, the band's Instagram accounts even, underneath the write-ups, it would have made all the difference in the world, because I just... I don't know. I think it's just because I've 
put in a lot of work when it comes to writing and I always take it 100% seriously and it just kind of and I know it's not the case I just felt like somebody was getting paid for my work and it's not the case I'm getting publicity but you know like here's the ruin right up in noise dosage like it's just a little a little bit with uh like if you could describe your sound in three words what would it be heavy fucking death it's because mjs doesn't need to describe his band he's in fucking ruin you know what they sound like and we're gonna change on death i can't play the full length because then we'll get a copyright claim so Hails the Caligari Records for, you know, noticing them to begin with. Like, it's fucking awesome. But, you know who else is awesome? And this is not the Gurgling Gore version, so don't be like, how did you get this? <laughs> Alright, this is the original Physicist self-released demo. Okay, so don't be like, yo, how the fuck did you get a copy already? They're shipping. Okay, the patches were making everything get held up a little bit. These things happen. And, uh, your tapes, I'm pretty sure they shipped. Uh, Gurgling Gore made a post about it. But I love Physicists. They're fucking great. So we're gonna listen to Embodiment of Decay. Killer shit. But anyways, here we have Parallax Occlusion. I love that fucking band. And there's a lot of, you know, bands I've never heard of. There's a semi-review of the new Thorn record. Then there's a write-up about the new Necrosexual EP, but it's Necrosexual, the most electrifying man in corpse entertainment, slayer of posers, the Grim One, the Joan Rivers of Black Metal, Casanova of Cadavers, Icon of Cult Bastard to All, new EP coming later this year, Wimps Beware. Then we have some documentary reviews. I'm sure most of you have seen Slaves to the Grind. If you haven't, watch it. It's on YouTube. Write-up of Morbific, which is, in my opinion, the best write-up in here, because... It's right to the fucking point. Skull stomping death metal with haunting doom passages and punkish assaults. Rising from the foulest boneyards of eastern Finland for those who kneel before autopsy, anatomia, and rotivore. Fuck yeah. Like, that's a great write up. And we have some Oxygen Destroyer info. Uh, Flesh Ripper Magazine is an Insta account that reviews mainly death metal releases i've never heard of it but i'll have to check it out a little write-up of terminal nation blood spore then here's some artists and stuff a little gurgling gore ad like it's not a bad zine but i just feel like it's a little too busy but like fumes torn in half pretty much every band that's like making waves right now is in here in some way shape or form from mortem pharmacist inoculation frozen screams even gets like a shout out i thought that was cool in internal infestation wretched inferno like you know, some good shit. Like, every band in here they go over is good for the most part. I need to review a, a Black Knife tape I have. I keep putting it off. And the same with some of my Valak releases, but I'll be going over those soon. Phobophilic have a great write-up also. And then, uh... There's some more stuff. More band little write-ups, uh, Pestilent Death, Path to War, the band Blunt Splitter, that, that's such a cool fucking name, man. Um, but yeah, like, that's pretty much it. 
But uh, again, it's not bad. And if you are new to extreme music, grab one. Because this is, you know, on each page, you're gonna find a band that you might not have ever heard of. And then you can go look them up, see if you like them or not, and there you go. That's what's awesome about a zine. It doesn't matter who wrote what. I just thought like, oh, maybe we would get some, like, cause you know, like I said, I used to write for a real magazine and if they wouldn't have given me credit for some of my writing, I would have been kind of upset cause the one time I had to do a 17 page 21 rider article and it was gnarly to do like seriously it was hard work and if i wouldn't have gotten credit i would have been very bummed out because it was my peers that were reading it and i feel the same way here i just would have appreciated if it just would have said something like band bios from the band's mouths to your eyes or like i said anything like that even a little at whatever your band is like that would have made a big difference because i don't know but i love frozen screams just from the color layout everything about this is just professional it's diy yet has a professional feel to it and to me this is the best zine in the game right now and I'm not just saying that, like, I honestly, like, I mean, come on, I keep them in a fucking package, like, purposely so they don't get damaged. I read these, and I still read them. It's like my head split newsletters, like, I think they're fucking great. They're just fun to read, because, like, a lot of it's tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, sometimes you get some real sick news out of it. Like, that was how I found out about the new Fetid record, was, um, reading, uh, the Head Split newsletter. Like, there was just, like, a what, what you're listening to and, uh, a coming soon column. And it was just like, holy shit, you know? Like, I just love Head Split, like, but, uh, yeah, when it comes to noise dosage media, if you're new to extreme music... I highly suggest checking this out. The podcast was pretty good until I got to Killbot and Gorgor Attack. I forget his real name. I think it's Dylan. It was just loud, immature, and just... The thing that bummed me out is I like that kid's YouTube videos. Like, he definitely busts his ass. But you can tell that the guy behind this, like, he's trying to get the interview on course. And this kid's talking about, like, girls' boobs and stuff. And it's just like, I don't know. You can kind of tell. It's just like, man, this guy's coming off kind of immature and annoying. And, you know, if you watch his videos, he kind of has a sense of humor. It's not really my thing. But I appreciate his editing and hard work. To me, that makes a big difference. But when it comes to noise dosage media, if you're new to extreme metal, check this out. If you kind of know what bands right now are killing it, I would read it for the interviews. But like I said, a lot of the interviews are only like a couple sentences. But Again, I just feel like if this would have been separated into two separate zines, like if issue one was just half of this, it would have worked a lot better. This just feels, like I said, unless you're new to extreme metal, because in that case, this right here is your Bible. And that's a fucking compliment, seriously. Because you can find a new band on every page to check out that is awesome. Like, seriously, every page has a band or something along the lines, like, here. 
If you don't know what gurgling gore is, now you do. So definitely check it out, but there were certain things about it. It is issue one. It just kind of bothered me at times. And again, it's just because like on the table of contents and stuff, I think they should have put everything. Like if you're like, don't just put the popular people and bands that are inside. And I get it. That's how you sell this stuff. But I don't know. For some reason, it rubbed me the wrong way. And it shouldn't have. But it did. Not the whole zine. Just I would have liked a little way to get in touch with my band. And all the bands. Even though some don't need you know, the extra exposure. I really, like I said, appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. But sometimes I feel credit needs to be given when credit is due. But I appreciate the opportunity to be in a zine with fucking bolt thrower. So I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Let you get on with your day. We were blasting Undeath and Physicist. Two of the best modern American death metal bands right now. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. <laughs>